Well, hey, I want to talk about the Kun Wu Ronin, and then I'm going to tell you about the Kun Wu Tao, T-A-O, because that's on Kickstarter. And the Kun Wu Ronin is available on the Kun Wu website for only $139. What? So, I mean, I thought, that, you know, this knife at first when I saw this come out, and of course... I've got the Kunwoo Orion, right? I mean, this was the first thing that they put out. And so uh, this is, you know, titanium, frame lock, flipper. Was this S35VN? Yeah. And of course, I got Kurt to stab it a couple times. Somewhere in the archives is the Rockwell from this knife. And so after they put out this knife, I think that's when they started their relationship with my buddy K Knives Switzerland. His name is Roman. He lives in Switzerland. K Knives Switzerland. I'll give you the link to his Instagram. Check out his Instagram channel, okay? Um, because he is a steel nerd, okay? So he's kind of in with that testing group that I was part of or still am part of technically. And, um, and they always talk about heat treat, austenizing, you know, carbide distribution, grain refinement, you know, all that kind of thing, tampering, and then the difference between dry grinding, wet grinding. I mean, after the heat treat and all that, I mean, you don't want to lose your edge uh, by burning it up uh, with dry grinding. So the, he got in with that group. Uh, uh, Sergio did. Sergio at Kunwu. And so he was talking to Roman, who is totally into all these different exotic steels. He has his own heat treatment thing, and he can, and then he can also test hardness at the edge of a blade and all through the blade, okay, to find out if there's a change in the hardness from top to bottom, which is something I don't know how to test for. This is all we do. We stab it here on a flat spot because we can't get it on an angle. But he has a special machine that tests that. So it's very interesting. And of course, if you're not aware of knife steel nerds, look that up. And then uh, that kind of thing. So they're all chit-chatting back and forth and interested in all how that goes. So the one unique thing about Kun Wu is that Sergio has his people there in China. Of course, Sergio's European or whatever, but he stays or lives in China at least part of the year. And he's interested in developing a product that really appeals to people who care about kind of the whole process. And so I'll give you the link to the Kickstarter for the Tau, which is their new product that's coming out that looks... Kind of, kind of like this. They have a small one and a large one, and um, it and really they're not very expensive. This one's about a hundred dollars, and this is about a hundred and thirty-five. So the big one is not big. The big one's just like normal size. This one's very small, but uh, I'll give you the link for that, and I'll show you pictures later of that. But this is the one I have because the Tau is still being, you know, uh, on the Kickstarter and hasn't gone in or hasn't finished production. I don't know if they're in production yet. But this one, I wasn't sure if I was that hyper turned on by the design, but the more I have it in my hand, the more addictive it becomes. And, you know, it's titanium frame lock flipper and on and on, you know, but, and it's S35VN and what did I get? A first production run? Wow. Um, but it, it, the more I have it in my hand, the more, I don't know, there's something about it, um, in a lot of things. First of all, the suspended kind of backspacer look here. And then of course you've got the, uh, lanyard, uh, post there, which sometimes they drive me crazy when you're reassembling, you know, the knife, you got to get that stuck in there and make sure, but, and we will disassemble this one, by the way. You got a nice, nice little landing zone for your finger when you flip it. But I mean, take a look at the top of the blade. Okay, so that's crowned. That's nicely done. Nice grind. Uh, yeah, very symmetrical. 
There's your lockup. That's mm, 25 to 30%. And your pass through disengaging is easy. And as soon as that thing kicks you in the thumb, you're over your detent ball. So, you know, it's very fidget friendly. It's flat. It's not contoured. Okay. So, but it, it's, it's, it feels slender in the hand. Okay. But it has enough height here to where you can get good purchase and it's neutral enough to where the ergos work fine. And check this out. Okay. Nothing here, but there's torques. These are number eights all the way through. Thank God for small favors. So that's nice as well. And obviously they've weight relieved it on the inside. It doesn't feel heavy in the hand and it's not, it's not a huge knife. Let's get something out. I know this gets a little tiring with the para too, but I mean, you can see it's right in that kind of territory and let me put the tape on it real quick and then I'm going to get into a little bit about kind of what makes Kanwu a little bit different. Yeah, there's three and a half all the way up to the top of this bolster, but as it swings away, you see you got three point, what, 3.65? Um, something like that as far as cutting edge. And then kind of in the middle of that choil, it's three and three quarter with just eight and an eighth so eight point was that point one two five overall length at twenty and a half centimeters. I remember a guy commenting that putting the metal tape to the edge here is going to cause micro dulling of that tip. So now I can't even stab my hand because it's so. I'm just kidding. Okay, uh, no, I was just like, man, if that's going to dull the edge, I want my money back. <laughs> I'm just saying, and if we're looking through a microscope, we're way, we're way, you're way beyond me. Okay, you, you've lost me. Um, but yes, I like this. I think the fit and finish on this, I don't think, I know the fit and finish on this is good. And it, it feels good. I mean, there's so much about this knife that is nice because being just at eight inches overall, yet... Over three and a half inch cutting edge is pretty good. Oh, let me grab a grab a piece of paper. Oh, baby, that just jumped off. Okay, so yeah, they sharpened it. Yes, they did. And speaking of that, okay, let me let me toss that in the garbage. But let's get over here and grab me another piece of paper. Um, <clears throat> this one here. I mean, if you look. This is off of their Kickstarter. I think this. I think I printed this off of the Ronin Kickstarter page. But you can just go onto Kunwu website and look at the Ronin and and, and buy it. Uh, but they were talking about you know they because of their interaction with the the testing guys and the knife steel nerd like Roman and stuff. They were talking about we didn't want to heat the edge up. During the, during the grinding process after heat, treat, and tempering's done and lose all that on the edge, you know? And so that's what we're doing. We are doing uh, sublimation cooling, okay? So they, they were doing some kind of wet belt uh, grinding, okay? So it was wet, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't heat up. And I think now they're on a stone or a wheel or something, so and it's quenched. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're looking into all that and it'll be interesting in the future to see if they may jump to some of the, even the more exotic steels on some of their future models. So, I mean, it'll be kind of fun to watch this develop, but yeah, I mean, it's smooth. I mean, they've thought of a lot of little details jumping there, but they did a little partial cutout on the flipper tab um, then, you know, nice milling here and radiating lines along here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. Now I can't finger flick this out because I can't get my finger in there. So it's flipper tab only now. Oh, no, can't do that. Come on. Oh, finally. 
Okay, so uh, let me see if I can fail it because it, it's definitely not a weak detent. Uh, uh, fail attempt number one failed. Okay, so yeah, this is gonna, even for a rookie, yeah, it's probably not gonna fail. And yeah, okay, so yeah, it's set to like a no fail type of detent hold. So it's not overpoweringly incredible, but it is just where it needs to be. Nice and snappy too. Now they didn't really open this choil up much for really getting your finger up here but you can sneak up there if you want there's no jimping up on here or here but as far as i'm concerned that's fine oh let's get the scale out um it feels light in the hand uh and i don't remember the specs now so so it's good that we're just doing this offhand 3.75 i mean you know that's not much for ounces uh it's well under four ounces uh, at about 106 grams. So that is as light. It's the same size as the Spyderco Parrot Military 2. And it's the same weight as the Spyderco Parrot 2. Uh, even though this is titanium and that one is G10. And yeah, over the detent ball, quick, nice, very fidgety, and it's centered. No blade play, no lock rock, none of that. And where's my balance point on this? Right there. Uh, to me, this looks right hand only. There's no left hand option. Tip up. And does the design flow? Yeah. And, you know, Sergio at Kunwu, he, I mean, he's got this group of guys and They've worked for various companies that if I named them, you'd know as designers and people there. So he's kind of put that band together uh, to do some things. And they did that Firefly, I think. That was that one on Kickstarter, that budget one. And, and of course, I don't have one to put on camera to show you that. But that was a Kickstarter one. That was really cool. And they just kind of did that as a lark. And... And it was really good. They did a really good job. And they sold them cheap too, like 39 bucks. That's why I bought one. And I should have got two. Okay, so. Yeah, interesting. And we've tested, obviously, because you saw the Rockwell divots on here, that it was uh, PMI'd as well. And yes, it is truly S35VN. So uh, that's that's not a question at all. Now let's uh, put the calipers on it. So 11.5 uh, millimeters at 0.45. That's as thin, maybe just slightly thinner than the paramilitary two. And 0.12, three millimeter. So nice and slicey, huh? I mean, they didn't overdo the blade. Uh, so yeah, this, this, this is quite the nice little knife. And you could do some dressing up on this because there's a lot of silver here, isn't there? But, uh, you know, it really looks nice in its own right as well. Yeah, blade to handle length is fine. Uh, any, any longer and I could probably touch the tip of that. But I can't touch the blade through here no matter how much I try. And no, I can't. Um, so that's good. That's solid. So before I get to taking this apart, I just wanted to let you know, because I, I did want to do a blurb for him about the towel, because that's what's uh, active on Kickstarter right now, is the towel and the mini towel. And it's M390. It's a front flipper. Okay. And so that is not going to be very expensive either. I think... Uh, well, I can't remember the price, but I, I think I wrote that down somewhere around $135 for this one and about $100 for that if you get in on the Kickstarter. Okay, and here's the parameters of that. Okay, so obviously 
blade length is right at three and a half and it's eight and a quarter overall so the same size as like a Spyderco paramilitary pretty close to the exact same length as this one as well HRC they're going to try and make sure they're running this 60 to 62 unfortunately M390 on many knives has a hard time even getting to 60 and 62 is almost unheard of uh, on the all the testing that we did this is going to be 4.5 ounces so and here's the mini of course it's going to 2.36 inch blade length overall five and a half inches so it's a small small knife so like i'm saying as what they're saying about the towel as well you know, we do not overcook our knives once heat treated, okay? You don't want to grind them without water cooling. You're going to destroy the temper of the edge and, you, you know, you're going to make it soft. And so they talk about this. Uh, and I think that's comforting because they are doing different tests and different techniques to make sure they preserve the hardness and the integrity of the edge. So if you're somebody who kind of appreciates that, then, you know, you might appreciate that. And, and it's something you just don't see necessarily, but you'll experience over time with the edge retention, as opposed to other M390 knives that uh, may, mop, and may not be done in the same manner. Yeah, just another um, shot here of the breakout on the Tau. And just to make you aware of that so you don't miss the Kickstarter uh, situation and discussions about heat treat as well. Uh, I think that's, that's great. Talk about sharpening, tolerances, all kinds of things. So there's good information on that. So I do appreciate a company that kind of really looks into details. Uh, sometimes the details mean a great a great amount of difference, uh, you know, from them and the others that are just putting out knives. Uh, so I do appreciate that a lot. And they're very aware of what's going on. Oh, here's the box. Wow. Okay. You got a nice bag in here and it's uh, got drawstrings. And then thank you. And what else we got? We got stuff. Oh, we got an extra little insert. Uh, we've got uh, microfiber cloth and a nice fitted box. So that's nice. All together. I find it to be a good package. So no uh, way to get in on the knife on the front at all. It's kind of nice. It's kind of clean because there's no real hardware showing along here. Let's just uh, start where we're supposed to right at the pivot and turn this baby off and that wasn't difficult come on okay so much uh, for that i'm trying to see i'm looking right now at that pocket clip screw and that just seems to go into the scale so i don't think that has anything about to do with holding the knife together and there goes that screw so maybe this thing should come apart okay we got her and there it is um weight relieving definitely hardened steel insert with the over travel stop and then of course ceramic detent ball and there's your steel washer and there's your Blade stop. Oh, well, no wonder it's addictive, the action. So you got multi-row ceramic bearings, which is great. That's what I'd do if I was going to make a knife. That would be one of my musts, is I want multi-row bearings. There you go. I like that. Now let's take a look at this pivot. Oh, yeah, and it's D-shaped. So they got that detail right, too. So... Yeah, you don't need an entrance here for uh, Torx because it's going through here. And yeah, the bottom right there is squared off. So you've got, uh, you know, it's going to lock up and the pivot's not going to turn. You just take the screw out from the back.
And this is just about as simple as it gets, right? Um, that's pretty amazing. Now, you don't see any hardware from the front here. You just got a locator pin that comes through here, holds that in. And then, of course, this, nothing there. Oop, just about lost my pin, about fell out. But so you could you can pull this off if you want. So you got that pin and this pin. This is where it actually comes together. And this, you know what, this little lanyard thing, that's pushed in there pretty good. So I'm glad of that because I'm always worried about those things falling out and being a pain in the ass to stand up and keep standing up when you plop the top back on when you reassemble them. So, hey, that's all good as far as I'm concerned. As far as if you want to get in and do any cleaning or maintenance, well, you don't need to pull the lanyard pin out, okay? You probably don't need to take the backspacer off either. Uh, so, where does that squared off place go? And there's, it's squared off at the bottom. And like I said, yeah, it's squared off at the bottom there. So, multi-row bearings, um, throw some juice on it, throw a blade on it, let me see, yeah, looks good, it's clean, that's for sure, um, and there's not much to, you know, to taking it apart, putting it together, because there's just not much to it, I mean, you got a couple of screws, and that's it. And, of course, there's our stop that we didn't pull out. I mean, we didn't disassemble that much of it, but we didn't need to. And you don't need to to do maintenance necessarily. So, um, but you can, you, you can take that all apart if you want. And let's get this locked down. I don't want to get it too locked down. And here's this little number eight right back in here. Okay. Let's tuck this one up. Okay, come on. Let's snug it up. Okay, now we're snugged up really good. And we're centered up. Did I get it too centered up? Uh, I mean, too, you know, torque down, and no, no, actually, I didn't put too much pressure. You develop kind of a feel for that after a while when you're putting knives together. Kind of good is good enough, and don't get too zealous with cranking the screw down. As long as you got no play and it's centered, you're good, especially when you have a drop like this now. This is much nicer than it was originally. And it's not guillotine-ish, but it's it's definitely more playful. So yeah, that's good. All right, we're done with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, this thing, the more I put my hands on it, the more I like it, the more I can appreciate what they've done. It's definitely sharp, definitely kind of a nice shaped blade to be able to pierce and slice general tasks like that it's it's light i mean it's under four ounces easy in the pocket i've carried it a couple times and this pocket clip works pretty well see it's somewhat springy but it's not designed in a way that's really going to be difficult to get in and out or over and back over of the lip of your pocket so they thought about that as well. It's relatively deep carry. It's not deep carry, but you know, um, yes. Um, you know, kind of a less is more design as well. Okay. It, it's relatively simple, but I think elegant as well. And I think you'll appreciate the feel of it. It just feels well done. And good Lord almighty. I'm not talking about a $200 knife. I'm not even talking about $150. Uh, you know, I'm kind of shaking my head. I think they made mention there that it's kind of crazy affordable, but I mean, that's one of the points they were making. So I agree. 
I agree. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this, and I'm I'm definitely gonna stand in and get the towel and see what that's all about because it's a front flipper now i'm not huge on front flippers but now they got my curiosity up so and over time you know i'll kind of see how the edge on this one goes you know so i'll i'll start i'll start taking it to task and and see that it'd be interesting to have somebody do a a cut test as well and compare it maybe to another brand of knife that has an s35 vn blade and and see how that works of course they've cut tested several some of the guys from the group and so maybe you know just chart it out and look at how it compares to other ones they've done and i'm going to leave you to it uh subscribe to my channel if you would i'd appreciate that a lot because it really helps and you know what we do we love them knives. See you guys. Stay sharp.